Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have got more developments happening in regards to this war in Israel. We now got Russia stepping into the game. Zelensky trying to get everybody to just gang up on what is happening between him and the Russian Empire. Guys, it's a mad one going into the markets today. But why is it important? Because now we're going to get insight into whether investors are really actually favoring the US. Hello? Yeah. I'm just about to do a live, bro. Now you call me? Okay. Uh, I'm fine with that, yeah. Just just tell me you're placing the orders there and we can go about our day. Look, man, you haven't called me in such... <sighs> that was Steve. Steve is a market maker. He's a good friend of mine. He hasn't called me in several months. Now he calls me. Well, I won't say several months. It was several weeks, to be fair. He's just giving me a heads up on something. He hasn't actually given me anything, to be fair. But we're going to get to the charts and talk about it in a second. Before I was rudely interrupted. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today, the marketplace is probably going to be showing signs that investors are going to be rushing towards the bonds. Why? Now, I'm going to be a bit skeptical here, but call me a conspiracy theorist, whatever you want to say. But have the bonds been purposely forced down lower just to encourage people to buy them? U.S. credit rating was downgraded. All right. They're increasing the debt ceiling, which they've already done. All right. In one day, the U.S. debt rose 275 billion. It's like the U.S. is calling for money from investors overseas. The yields are up nearly at their highest point in 14 years. Like, <laughs> this would be the perfect time to now get bonds cheap. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into what's going on around the world and how this can actually impact trading the financial markets. We're going to use the hybrid system to gear us into a directive where prices could end up and don't forget, tomorrow is inflation data. And we already know that maybe if the inflation data does come in line with estimates and nothing higher, then we could be at the end of this interest rate increase. But with the data that's been coming out on the US, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be surprise, surprise, mother. Yeah, anyways, let's get with the flavor. So... What we got going, Bitcoin's taking a little bit of a nice move to the downside. It's coming into a very important zone. And I'm going to be talking about this very, very shortly. But what we've got to do is now look at how and what investors are seeing happening around the world. Check this bad boy out. First things first, we need to start talking about what is going on in between Russia, Ukraine and Israel. We know Israel are going for it and they're just taking Gaza nonstop. And it's a sad sight. But we need to understand what's going to happen behind the scenes of that. Check this out. So right now, earlier on this week, should I say, Zelensky called for people to join together. OK, that we've gone to NATO and he was like, look, guys, we need Europe. We need everybody to start joining forces together. It's like he's the spokesman. I'm being invaded. I need help because Russia is stepping up the pad and Russia has only just recently done some more attacks. And it's a little bit of a problem for him. Now we're starting to encourage more nations to step in in regards to this Israeli Gaza attack. Right. Stick with me on this one. On the back of this, Putin did say. That if NATO gets involved, there's going to be a problem. Look what's going on. Russia's gearing up for a standoff with NATO. Only recently, he actually moved the Black Sea fleet to effectively probe Ukraine. All right? He's moving now. Things are happening. All right? War is starting to escalate even further. Moscow ratchets up nuclear rhetoric with US test claims. So the word nuclear attack is now coming into play. Whether it happens or not, I don't think we could ever get into that. But the rhetoric itself is coming into fruition. This is how they, they, they scaremonger people into doing something. 
All right. We know the media is being manipulated in some aspects. Okay. How is it going to be geared to the bonds? Because we need to run to safety. And that's what investors are looking for. Check this out. You've got US Treasury's rally as investors scale back rate expectations. It's not the rate expectations. It's to see how long this war is actually going to go on for because they know that the US is going to step in. All right. And whatever happens, ladies and gentlemen, they will always run to dollar. That's the truth, especially during a war. We haven't got time to be worrying about de-dollarization when the same nations, okay, that are effectively not in bed with Israel as such, but there's going to be contributions. Zelensky's calling for China, he's calling for India, he's calling for everyone to step up. Well, BRICS can sit along the side and be like, all right, we'll worry about de-dollarization later. Well, to be frank with you, China's already got a bit of a problem, which now they need to start introducing a new stimulus because things aren't looking good and the Chinese economy is projected to start going down in the near future. Remember, China is the world's factory. Now, if China starts pumping money into the economy to encourage domestic investors to step in, that means domestic investors are going to think, hey, we got some liquidity coming in. Cool. What do we need to do? We need to go and buy ourselves some safety. We need to go put it into the bonds. You know how much we can get back on a million dollars on the two-year um, two yield? Let's go and have a look at that bad boy. This is what encourages investors to step in. Look, the yields right now are 4.986% on the two-year, going into the 10-year um, yields, they're up at 4.699%. The five-year itself, 4.6%. And then the 30-year, 4.8%. All right? For a sustained rally to the upside, we need the yields to slump and we need the bonds to move up. Now, the bonds are holding out very well and we are going to know if the investors are really going to be rushing to safety and pick up bonds on the cheap. OK, this is all going to help you understand if Bitcoin can move up or down, if Euro can move up or down, if the Nasdaq or the S&P are going to move up or down, because it all starts with the basket of assets that the government buys, which is what we call the treasuries, the debt as such. OK, and if investors are endorsing that and they want to go into safety, treasuries is where it's at, which is where this article comes into play. All right. Now, if we do see that the Federal Reserve is going to consider maybe stopping the interest rate increases and keeping interest rates higher for longer, that's a good thing. Why? Two things. Back in the day when money was cheap to obtain, money was going into places that would be deemed not so productive. OK, just look at the subprime mortgage crisis. You would have a single mom that was able to get liquidity and she was able to get herself a six bedroom house with no guarantee, with no security. OK, that's what led to the subprime mortgage crisis. Loads and loads of people getting properties with cheap money and they were just handing it out to them. OK, so that was when money was cheap. Now that we've got higher interest rates with the potential for it to be a longer period of time in high interest. Sorry. That means now money is going to be a little bit more diligent. That's going to only improve the economy. Why? Because money is going to be put in careful places so that they can at least generate a return. That means circulating money. That means higher interest rates in the US means more foreign investors are going to come over and engage with the dollar. That means the dollar is going to increase in value on the backs of all the other assets paired against it. So euro is projected to keep on moving down, even heading close towards parity. All right. Forget about day trading opportunities. We're talking about the bigger picture to help you understand how the flow of money is going to go from one place to the next. That's what you've got to take into consideration. So this is a big thing. And given that today we've got Waller speaking, he's going to be telling us, well, what, what he thinks should be happening moving forward. Now, he's a little bit hawkish at times when he's talking about the interest rates. But there have been some dovish comments, OK, which suggest that maybe there ain't going to be so many interest rate increases. But we know the Federal Reserve is a little bit data dependent. So going into tomorrow, we've got the core PPI index coming out, which is very important for the US. And on top of that, we've got Waller speaking yet again. And we have the good old FOMC minutes. Now, I believe that the minutes are going to say we're still on our mandate to get to the 2% target of inflation. And if interest rate increases are going to be in the scope, then it's all going to be based on data. Congratulations, Mr. FOMC. OMC minutes, that's really going to help us, which means that in the data on Thursday, we're going to be anticipating hopefully 3.6, a reduction on the inflation. But we haven't factored in the idea of what's going on with oil. 
That's the problem. Because oil has been moving up, that's posing a bit of an issue for us. Now, oil has done very well to hold on to its gains. And this tension overseas with Israel is going to garner more interest investors going into commodities. Look at gold. Gold is holding out and they are doing effectively the recovery on the hedge to the downside like we spoke about yesterday. So gold is projected to continue to move higher as long as these tensions keep on maintaining the stance across the board. OK. With regards to this Israel attack, we've got tensions happening in the UK. Back to what Zelensky said. He's talking and getting people to get involved. And now we're going to have the UK stepping in. Rishi is now stepping in, showing his support, looking solace and all of that. And now that only means what? We're going to start introducing and helping Israel and send them over shadow missiles and make life a little bit easier for you on the attack on Gaza. That's the sad truth, ladies and gentlemen. This is where it's at. OK, once you start getting nations stepping in, then you've got yourself a problem. So Zelensky now is the war mongrel. He's the guy that's going to be calling everyone. Hey, help me out, but also send some love over there. They just lost a little bit of funding because the U.S. wants to put that funding to Taiwan because they think that Taiwan is going to get overdone by China. Well, China's got bigger problems, like we said, over here. OK, but in good news, the U.K. is actually doing pretty well, given that the grocery inflation has actually come down. So I can now go and spend a decent amount of money on eggs. and I haven't got to worry about paying six, seven pounds for a dozen loaf of eggs, dozen loaf of eggs, a dozen eggs. Look, eggs are expensive in the U.K., man. You know, I'm paying six pounds for my eggs. I want the good eggs, you know, and at best of times when I go to the artisan butchers, they've got me some geese egg, goose eggs. And, you know, they're big bad boys, man, but they're like two pound an egg. But you know what? When you have that egg, bro, it's, it's the one for me. But this puts things into perspective. And with that being said, you can see that the dollar, it's or the pound against the dollar is doing pretty well. Quite choppy, but it's doing pretty well. So what are we actually looking at here? Is the pound going to go up continuously? Is it going to go up against the dollar? Is the dollar going to keep on going down? The problem that we got with the marketplace, ladies and gentlemen, is simple. We've got to accept the fact that there is a possibility, OK, that at any moment the dollar can shoot up and tomorrow is a day for that. So keep that in mind. In other news, ladies and gentlemen, for my Mexican folk, check this bad boy out. There is now a run for a climate expert, Claudia, to lead Mexico. OK, why is this important? Well, Mexico is sat on oil, ladies and gentlemen. All right. And she is deemed as a an accomplished scientist which in essence is going to be giving Mexico a little bit of a stance when it comes to commodities. Now, whether she succeeds at, you know, getting the becoming president as such, what we've got to be mindful of is, is if, if Mexico itself is sitting on oil, what stock would benefit from this woman going into power? Check this out. Vista Energy right? It's based in Mexico, engaged in the exploration and product iron of oil, gas, Latin America, Argentina. Look at this bad boy right here. $30 a share, right? Doing really well. And if she gets into power, companies like Vista Energy are going to be given free room to go and explore oil. These are the guys that are going to turn around and say, we found it. Pay us. They're going to get that oil and that oil is going to be pushed out. So an emerging economy like Mexico is going to see the benefit on the back of oil. Again, oil runs the world. OK, now we're going to see how the US is going to handle that bad boy. We're going to see if there's any going to be any sanctions put onto the Mexican government if they do have a big find. That's another story, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on, the markets will be opening in 15 minutes. OK. Let's go and have a look at a couple of ranges for BTC. And mad love to everyone coming into the live stream last night, man. It was a pleasure speaking to you all. It was good fun. And the word aluminium is how you say it. I know you guys in the US. I had to Google it, man. Aluminum. No, no. Aluminium. That's how we say it. That's, that's what it spells, ladies and gentlemen. Aluminium. Garage. Garage. It's the same word, you just say it differently. So Americans have a dialect, would that be the case? I've got a dialect, you know, I speak Greek. I'm from Cyprus, so I speak Greek, okay? But my Greek is deemed as gypsy Greek, the village guy, you know? <laughs> my Greek guys will know what I'm talking about. Anyways, Bitcoin, what we got going off here? 
Look, we've got two ranges right now. Bitcoin has cleared the daily open aggressively, but it hasn't actually fully broken down. Remember, we're waiting for the stock market to really go into full force on the idea that the bonds market is going to get triggered and engage in investor sentiment to seek safety. Okay? The uncertainty with the Israeli war itself is making investors think, right, right now might not be a good time to have risk on. Okay? But in my opinion, I think they're preparing everything for a surprise reading on inflation. All right? Let's just put things into perspective, right? First things first. Going into this week, we have earnings announcements coming out. Okay? And today we have Pepsi and then Neogen, E2 Print, Box. We have just, just Pepsi itself as the bigger player in terms of market cap declaring their earnings. We go over to Pepsi itself and we can see... That we have got PepsiCo, what we got? Decent market cap. It's taken a smack to the downside in the last couple of weeks. But news announcements, earnings could see a return. And if that's going to be the case, Pepsi will shoot out. Okay, we're going to be expecting that very, very shortly. If you look at their earnings per share, it's been relatively well. We've had a 9%, 16%, then it's moved down to 12%. But it's in safe regions. I'm cool with that earnings per share reading. Then going into the actual daily itself, we want to be paying attention to quarterly increases. So we, they're not stagnant, but it's 9, 11, 10, 10. So it's, sorry, um, yeah, 10, 9, 16, 12. So it's, it's just, it's a soft drink, man. People keep drinking it. These guys are going to keep making money. That's the thing. Drink sparkling water. That's the best thing you can do, ladies and gentlemen. Going back into the charts right now with BTC, we just need to have a look at a couple of things. We're seeing the same thing that we saw yesterday. Oh, this is what Steve was talking about, guys. Check this out. Right here, we've got a lot of commitment coming in. Now, look at this zone. You can see it, right? This area is what we would call bid interest all right this whole area right here when you zoom out it puts the ranges into perspective we've got a top side region here which showed a bit of commitment from the sellers limit orders but they placed their orders counted them and then they weren't interested as that's why we don't really see much happening here the book is imbalanced to 33 percent limit buys that means that most people right now want to get orders filled. So what would we be expecting? Maybe into the start of the marketplace, a sweep down, okay? Then we'd be looking for V-shaped plays. What do we mean by V-shaped? Check this out. Five minute time frame. What have we got going off here? Bitcoin has not stopped going down, okay? And this is a very important area for Bitcoin. Now, if you remember in last night's live stream, we were talking about the violet vector candle appearing at the lowest point in the chart, which could be suggesting volume is starting to rise, but also means that the activity, it could be slowing down. We're seeing violet vector candles appearing inside of this zone. The logic would say that we expect Bitcoin in and around this range to initiate a spike lower. Always fact to the fact. Fact to the fact, you know, this guy with his use of vocabulary is so brilliant. Here we go. You have to build in the idea in your trade that there could be a possible sweep of liquidity down here. There's interest. This is money. 363 Bitcoin orders looking to get filled right now. We've got 1,096 Bitcoin orders around the 27,050 zone. Okay, so now we've got a scope of what could be getting engaged in this area right now. Okay, this is how we build the idea of a potential play going into the high block itself. Look at the liquidity right here. So let me just quickly run this on the chart. Remember, this chart here is only to give you a psychological outlook on what there could potentially be happening in this area. Look, down here, we have got at 26,900, we've got $3.9 billion worth of long liquidations. Going into the liquidity chart over here, we have got a very interesting bag of liquidity, which sits above the 27,000 zone, which happens to be margins, 25x. That means more people using more margin to open leverage trades rather than the 100x traders who use minimal margin and then get exposure which is why they get their accounts shaken out all the time okay looking at this you can see lots of guys are running for shorts right now so the guys that are running for shorts we just have 20 million dollars worth of shorts open at 27,410 this is wrong you do not open shorts as price drops. If you're a scalper, momentum trading is a different story because the scalper's not going to be in a trade long enough. 
for it to affect it because he's looking for the momentum. You can open trades in shorts here and then ride the move towards the next region where you expect price to reverse from. Fast in, fast out. That's how you do it, okay? But there are traders that are loading up here on the idea that Bitcoin's going to continue lower. And we kind of projecting out the idea that there could be a sweep of liquidity, which is going to seal the commitment of retail traders to continue to go short. If we look at the actual price action of Bitcoin right here, we can then put that logic to play and say, OK, what have we got going off here? We've got a nice sharp move to the downside. Let's go into the higher time frames to understand the vector candles. Well, look, we're coming into an area where naturally this is where Bitcoin likes to reverse from. How many times has it reversed from this zone? Well, it's reversed from here and it's reversed from here and it's reversed from there as well. So we've had one, two, three, nearly four attempts at this range. OK, now, if the bonds market is going to start moving up, that means investors are seeking the safety of the gov US government. All right. That's naturally going to lead assets across the board to increase in value, because if they want US debt, then happy days. That also means gold is likely to continue to go up. That also means oil is likely to continue to go up because oil and gold as commodities is where usually investors like to go when it comes to uncertainty in the marketplace. All right. Whatever happens from now going into the inflation data tomorrow is pretty much going to set the tone as to whether or not Bitcoin is going to hold out in this range. I genuinely think Bitcoin could hold out inside of this zone up until the inflation reading tomorrow. OK, from now until the inflation reading, we're probably going to get some movement across the board. We can see euro is starting to climb up and make a nice little move. We've got obviously dollar yen still holding out on that 150 play right there. And of course, the Chinese stimulation right there is good news for the marketplace because then that prompts the idea of bonds being purchased by local or domestic Chinese investors because now they've got capital to do so. We're going to have a look at aluminium. Trading sideways, not that much of an interesting thing. But we go into the yen itself. Have a look at the yen. Where are we at with the yen? Here we go. So the yen is trailing lower. They've come back into the vector candle wick right there. So that's very interesting for us. And we've got one more zone down here, which would project to me the idea of dollar's attempt or dollar yen's attempt back up to 150 before the Japanese yen come in and do an intervention. All right. Going into the actual calendar itself. We have got Bailey speaking this week on Friday the 13th. We've got Chinese inflation data coming out. And if Chinese inflation data suggests that there is a problem with inflation, then this stimulus package right here is going to be pushed. And they're going to do their hardest to make sure that they can keep the money game working for them. Because remember, China needs to start consuming most of the oil. We need China to start moving. All right. And oil's price has gone up not because of China. And that's what they messed up on. OK, going into the altcoins, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at what we've got going off here. BNB token all of a sudden starting to make a little bit of a move right now between 211 and 213 dollars a coin range between 210 as well. So we need to really understand what's going on with the BNB token. USDT, happy days. Let's roll over to that bad boy. Nice little stop run to the upside. Red vector candle right there, ladies and gentlemen, to give us the idea that they could be getting ready for a move to the upside. What we got here. Look, just be careful. That zone, loading up on the longs, preparing price for a move later on. BNB would need to stay inside of this range and hold out for that to be the case. All right. Quickly going into the live order flow. Oh, we got Bitcoin making a nice little pump on the three minute time frame. Liquidity is zilch. Nothing is happening inside of crypto. Look at this. 49, 38, 15 on futures. Are you mad? Let's just go into Ethereum for a split second, guys. And when you've got low liquidity, that's a problem for us because it means that it can shoot up and then it can drop right straight back down. Again, make sure you take your money out of the game of trading, all right? If you don't have that in your mind about taking profits, get away from trading. You're just going to be supplying liquidity to the guy who's happy to buy when you're in a problem and you've got to sell. Make sure you take money off the table. Pay yourselves continuously. Looking at USD CAD, currently basing out, and it's now coming to a very important range right here, which tells me whether or not oil is going to sustain itself. Okay. Now, if USD dollar, USD CAD continues to move back up, we would then anticipate oil to start moving back down. Now, oil futures have taken a little bit of a move higher. It was up 4% yesterday, and it's still holding on to the gains. And when you expect them to try and close a gap in oil, all right, only a news announcements would effectively move it to that point. Why? Because what they're doing right now is loading up on oil contracts because they think that this pressure overseas is going to get investors concerned and they're going to start going to oil. All right. They're expecting oil prices to go up. They're expecting inflation to come in higher. 
Now, oil hasn't priced in the logic of inflation from this move to the downside. But in essence, it has priced in this bad boy. Why? Because from August the 23rd, going all the way through to August the um, September 27th, we're now waiting to hear about the inflation reading, which is coming in very, very soon. So we've got an interesting scenario. We want to know if this bad boy right here is being priced into the next inflation reading. All right. But remember, they exclude food and energy because it's so volatile. But you've got to remember, it's about people's behavior and the fact that oil is moving up. Because if manufacturers are increasing prices again, oil is going to keep on moving up and inflation is going to keep on coming up. And of course, if people are in work all the time, they got money to spend. Ladies and gentlemen, the U.S. economy needs to slow down. It cannot improve. All right. And that's why the Fed's going to still maintain the idea of 2% inflation. And it's going to be high interest rates for a long time. That's what's going to be happening. Quickly go back into BTC. We've got effectively a nice little recovery right now. And we've got the market opening in just three minutes time, which leads me over to the following thing. So let's have a look at Bitcoin on exo charts for my exo charts gang. All right, let's move this bad boy over here. Tino, man, what are you doing, bro? Thank you very much. Here we go. So what we got? So this is for the guys that like order flow. Look at this. Huge imbalances appearing at the low side of Bitcoin. Okay. We've effectively had a little bit of divergence on the delta. That means price closed negative, but the delta was higher, suggesting that prices were closing higher as it was going lower. All right. That's given us the idea that they're actually stepping in. You want deltas to be strong at the lowest point. Look, 8%. 21% and this candle hasn't finished yet. And this is the 15 minute candle. Look at the move up. Look at the delta. Look at this imbalances, 28,269. Okay. So they were hitting the bids right here. Then the ask came in at 269. What's that mean? It means that aggressive buyers were stepping in at this point to lift the ask. So the bids were overwhelmed. They did it three times. Look, 15, 105, 29, 6. These are imbalances in the order book. And the way you read footprint charts is at an angle. Okay. So 28 to 269. Okay. That's how you do it to, to understand the imbalance figures. All right. Looking down below, you can see sellers were exhausted. There was too much selling happening here. We look back, you can see these little red dots. These are effectively the wrecked, but you see this, those areas there, these are what you call contracts that have been negotiated to be brought or sold outside of the marketplace in principle, okay? So that could be someone that is loading up on longs inside of this area, which then ended up effectively triggering a move up. Look, we're seeing the imbalances, okay? Now, Bitcoin's trying to hold out and go into this range right here. So we look up and we see in the order flow, and we can see, oh, we've got an empty shop, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we are not allowed these empty shops in Bitcoin. Mr. Market Maker doesn't like an empty market. And we need to highlight these areas in the chart. Why? Because they are points of interest that... If the pressure of the bids comes in at this point, we would assume that this is where they reverse from. So now we're going to be paying attention to how Bitcoin can sustain this area. OK, because remember, look, they're going into an area of imbalance where traders are effectively stepping in to sell. It's where aggressive sellers came in. All right. But at the same time, passive buyers that have got limit orders resting in the order book. OK. So we're now waiting to see if Bitcoin can actually sustain the move back up, given to the fact that we have got the book map and they haven't really taken the liquidity, but it's starting to disappear. That's important. So this could be a spoof. It could be a fake order. We're going to see that movement very, very shortly when the market opens. So let's just keep an eye on this range of Bitcoin. We've got to remember this is an empty shop and we don't like empty shops in the order book. Going over to the actual profile of the depth of market. This might be a little bit tricky for you guys, but just keep an, just hear me out on what I'm saying. This is the 25 day chart for Bitcoin. And we are now currently in value, which is this gray area right here. OK, this gray area tells me that at eight point, sorry, at twenty seven thousand four hundred and ninety nine. There was pressure to mark Bitcoin lower. Why? Because as the point of control, it tells me that that's where most of the buyers and sellers in the order book engaged. Now, you can see that it's now acting as an area of resistance. So logic would say that we expect Bitcoin to move up from this point to test the guy's interest inside this zone. Go into the hybrid system, split your chart up so that you can understand what you've got. You've got a red vector candle region right there. And the midpoint of that vector is here. Now we go into that point. And then we go into there and there we are. Right. So we've got two zones right now. 
Bitcoin's got two vector candle recovery points, and these are the midpoints. The first point would be 27,558, and the next one will be 27,467. That tells me that at this time, when this candlestick was being created, price started to pick up steam. So market maker was hitting prices down lower, trapping retail traders short, making them hit the flavor of futures leverage. They're going short. He's going long. And at that point right there, we would assume that if price can make it back up to that region, then we would assume market maker is going to continue to sell off from that point. But if he's done with his business at marking price lower, he's going to to try and succeed that range and move higher. That's if it gets to that point. The next point will be this area here. And that same logic has come into play. Look, they've come to the 50% 50, 50 zone of the red vector candle and rejected it and moved away. So it seems like there's a little bit of pressure up here. So we take that logic and look at 27,467, go into the book flow, order flow itself, and we can say 27,467 puts us inside of this area right here, which is before the point of control. So if they can succeed this area here, happy days, we can then go and attack the point of control, which would mean that Bitcoin has a good chance of coming into the VWAP, which is at 27,700. Cannot dismiss the fact that NASDAQ is bringing some unbelievable, phenomenal flavor right now, working its way above the value area high, which is good news, which means Bitcoin does have a chance to start moving back up. So here we go. We've got movement. We got movement, ladies and gentlemen. What time is it? I've got to be very swift, guys, because I've got to go pick up my daughter. But let's just keep an eye out on BTC and that point of control right there. Let me just quickly go over to my order flow. Is my empty shop there? Come on, where is it? I just had it. Where's my empty shop? I swear I just had it. Where are you? Here we go. Here's my empty shop. Here we go. Cool. Come on, Bitcoin. Nice bit of flavor. Here we go. He had a bit of an imbalance right there in the chart. That's good news for us. We want to see them commit. They've come down, swept the liquidity lower. Okay, we're going to wait and see Bitcoin. It's going to try and come and attack this area here. Say 63.47, huge imbalance. So that could be guys that are trapped in sales right there. But NASDAQ is moving up, okay? It's making big moves. Look at this push. Look, it's doing big things, NASDAQ. It's pushing out. It just went for the value area high. And we're going to want to see some more attacks at the 213 zone itself. Just quickly going over to this area here where we got it. Um, right, we are currently in value area high as well on the 25-day chart. It's going to keep on moving up. Bitcoin's making the move higher, ladies and gentlemen. That's good news for us. Remember the empty shop at the top side up here. We want to see Bitcoin go into that shop right there. When I say shop, you get the understanding. It's an empty area in the order flow itself. Quickly going into the book map itself. Have a look at Bitcoin. Look, they're trying to eat that liquidity, man. They want to take that zone. The markets have opened quite nicely. Let me just go to 15-minute time frame. Put things into perspective. Forgive me if I'm going a little bit too fast, ladies and gentlemen. I am a little bit slow when I do other things as well. Here we go. So this seems to be an area of support right now. Euro making nice flavor, some move higher. We've got gold holding out inside of this range. We need to quickly go over to the yields market. They're coming down. The bonds itself are looking to start moving higher. That's good news. Yen itself coming up. That means dollars looking to start working its way back down again. That's cool. So we're favoring longs in assets paired against the dollar for the time being. And we're going to now know very shortly if Bitcoin is going to start bringing that flavor with the idea and the logic of a V-shaped play coming into action in this area. Like, listen, these are two areas in the chart that you need to be very cautious of with Bitcoin as they could be areas of reversals. Look at this beautiful thing here. Green vector candles appearing at the lowest point in the chart, suggesting to me the following. Could Bitcoin go and attack the daily open? That would be a sweet spot for me today for Bitcoin to come and attack the daily open. Why? Because at 27,600, we've got a few guys stuck up there with short liquidations. Okay, quickly going into the order book, we can see it's starting to disappear right now. Interest might not come in, so they might trigger the interest of retail sellers at 28.5. That'll be a wild move, but we just need to quickly go over to the NASDAQ just to really put things into perspective. Wait there. You get what I'm saying. Here we go. So NASDAQ trying to make a move higher on the one minute time frame, coming away from that range. 15 minute chart shows that they're trading at the top side as well. Got to be very careful if they break this 15173 region. Got to be careful. NASDAQ likes to make a nice stab to the upside to only come back down. And it, you can tell it's getting very, very tricky right now. And oil climbing sideways, well, moving sideways. US 30 trailing lower, but not moving as aggressively as the NASDAQ. S&P is climbing up. Nice little wavy play by the S&P. Quickly going into Tesla itself. How's Tesla? Big strong open on Tesla. Gap down, but instantly filled it. That's good news for the tone of the marketplace itself. Let me just quickly go over to here, pull up the NASDAQ and have a look at how that bad boy is opening up nicely. Coming and test away from the 
yeah, 200 EMA right there. I'm going to go into the 60-minute chart as well to have a look at the liquidity coming in. You can see a little bit of a mini sell-off. Not so important in that area. Okay, so the daily looks like it's trailing positive as well. So we're looking okay. Volume is up plus 259%, but it's not enough volume until we see it at the end of the day. Big move up on Tesla. Big move up. That should only naturally encourage Bitcoin to try and make a climb towards the upside. Okay, Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to keep it short and sweet. If you are new to the channel, get to the Traders Reality website. There is a plethora of things for you to do and check out on the hybrid system. We've got a free course. We've got memberships. We've got all sorts happening over there. It's a wealth of knowledge regarding the hybrid system. Okay? Mad love and respect, ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you guys tonight. Aluminium. That's what it's about.